Hey guys, it's Christine Bertram, and I am coming to you live from the Hive on Thursday, April 14th. And we are going to be doing the monthly cards for April. <laughs> you guys, I looked at the calendar, and I say this every time that we get halfway to the month. It's like, how did it happen that it's already two weeks into a month? That just blows my mind how fast this time is going. I was just talking with Kathy this afternoon. She came and picked up some classes, some class kits. And uh, I've been away from my previous job for two months already, <laughs> pretty much. So wow is all I have to say to that. So I'm trying to figure out, you guys, now I always try to get my comments up here first and foremost. There's Zaina, woohoo. Okay, I'm in the hive, that's good. And let's see if I can find that video <laughs> very fast. Oh, you guys. So, uh, there it is. I'm wearing blue. I always have to look for my shirt. <laughs> so, yeah, it's scary. It's very scary how fast this year is going. Hi, Angela. Um, hi, Mitzi. The year is already a third of the way done, is it not, right? Almost a third. Um, so crazy. Hi, Doris. Um, so Angela, I have, uh, I'm looking over there. I have two uh, sets of class cards for you. The flowering fields and the in color, I believe, are ready for you now. Um, so we'll have to coordinate next week what day it works for you to come on over. Uh, so hi, Mitzi Stanley. Hi, Deb Norman. Whew, and there's Sue Somerville. Hi, Holly. You guys, it was a busy day today. Every day seems like a busy day. Hi, Julie Frost. Hi, Mary Ellen Ryan. Chili Montana. I heard that you guys out that way got about 14 inches of snow yesterday. Is that true? <laughs> hi, Diane Rangi. Um, hi, Betty Pyle. Um, somebody, oh, Jolene's. I think somebody stopped in. I had a couple of people that stopped in today, and uh, somebody told me that there was about 14 inches that people got out to the west. <laughs> so, hi, Sherry Martin. Hi, Gloria Shermo. Hi, D. Serena. You guys, it was a very, very busy day today. Um, Mom and I got all the packages out in the mail, and I will tell you, hi, Carmen Melendez. Hi, Deanne. Your birthday wasn't long ago, and I was, yeah, it, it feels like just yesterday, you guys, that it was January. <laughs> I definitely agree. Um, hi, Ann Bellinger. Oh, man, it was quite the week, you guys. When I have a shipping week, I feel a little bit disconnected. <laughs> I try not to be disconnected, but the days go so fast. So Monday, I spent cutting and prepping everything, and then Tuesday, my mom and I kitted the 824 cards. Hi, Barb. Hi, Denise. Um, oh, Sandy, you got two feet. Wow. Hi, Jean Maxwell. Hi, Susie Sox. Um, yesterday, I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't remember yesterday, but I know today. Um, Mom was here at like 10 o'clock and we finished around 4.30 and my dad stopped in and we looked at my taxes. Um, my mom and my parents, I know they love me because my mom came in to help me with the packages and my dad came in and helped me with my taxes for about two and a half hours. So I know, Zeta, we will definitely not send any snow your way. Hi, Lynn Beasley. Hi, Tammy Steckling. Uh, so the new catalogs came in. So I had packages of catalogs with card kits and woohoo. Hi, Becky Christensen. Um, so Mary Ellen got three feet of snow in western part of the state. Some places did. Okay. We you still have roads closed. Wow. Okay. So it was a whirlwind of a day, you guys. Um, I do have some pictures to share of the process. I didn't take pictures of the cart full of packages. You guys have seen that cart. It was full. <laughs> I believe there were probably 70 packages today that we coordinated to get out the door. Hi, Naughty Nancy. Uh, the counter is empty again. It's crazy. Uh, for those that came to class last night, they saw the entire counter full of stuff. It's, I don't know, my mom always says it. She's like, what would you do if we were still working out of your house versus working in the hive? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so it was all a good timing for all of that project to be done. Hi, Linda Hall from Northfield. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my gosh, I thought I knew my states, but MA, now I'm like, well, it's Maine, Maine, right? MA's Maine. <laughs> My brain is fried. Let's just leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> I'm usually good with all my states and the abbreviations. So, okay. Naughty Nancy, I forgot to ask you last night about the bee necklaces. I need them by Tuesday. <laughs> so, I was going to reach out to you uh, today. Completely crossed. Didn't, I mean, it crossed my mind, but I was in the middle of stuff. So, Massachusetts. Okay. That's right. So, Maine is M N. Missouri is M O. Minnesota's M-N, Michigan is M-I. 
<laughs> See, I did go to like school. <laughs> All right. Hi, Cindy Runtree from Southern Virginia. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, everybody. I so truly appreciate it. Um, we are going to make three cards tonight, the monthly cards for April. You guys, this is my core class. Uh, for those that are new to watching me and haven't seen me do this class, this was my core class, or it's, I, I should say it still is a core class. I have done this class every month since probably about 2015, and it's always called my monthly class. Um, and, oh, Sandy, no mail for three days. Wow. Hi, Mary Carls. Maine is M-E. Okay, Maine is M-E. Perfect. Thanks, Jean Maxwell. <laughs> There's a lot of states that start with the letter M. I am not going to say that Minnesota's M-N. Yep, that's, I think, what I said. Um, so, um, the monthly class is always three different uh, stamp sets or bundles. Hi, Mitzi Stanley. Um, if you see Mark this weekend, wish him a happy birthday. I will. So you guys, I gave my brother the tiger card <laughs> that I did for the card buffet this last weekend. Mary, I will tell him that. Um, so the monthly class is always three different stamp sets. So if you are able to be creative and crafty without having the exact stamp sets that I have, or if you have a lot of Stampin' Up! stamps like I have, <laughs> this class will appeal to you. Um, this class sometimes can be hard if you want your cards to be exactly like mine and you don't have the exact stamp set. You'd have to be able to be creative. Um, okay, yes, Nancy, I need two of them by, by Tuesday at the latest, okay? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so this monthly class I featured um, for this month, it was the Paradise Palm set the hats off and then also the ladybug so three different sets where hi donna hi brenda from ontario um hi marcia colbert so the the sweet bundle class is different where i focus everything on the sweet and bundle class and that's coming up next week with the flowering fields so just to recap on where we're at with classes you guys um i think i have one left as of right now for the class tonight i have one left for april monthly class hi penny powell from florida if anybody's interested in this It'll have to be the first piece person that I see in the comments and acknowledge. Uh, so I, I I only have one left. Um, for the in color class, you guys, I have about maybe, oh, I have it right here. Um, I have, in case anybody wants to sign up yet, mom and I, uh, we have about, we kitted up 40 to go and there were 30. So there are 10 left for the in color class and there are about 10 left for flowering fields and there are about 10 left for the ink paper scissors beauty of the earth so all of those three classes are coming up in the second half of april i do have space with all of them at the moment but as time passes those spots go away so just to give you guys an idea they're ready to go and i could get them popped in the mail next week not anymore this week i'm done with shipping my brain is fried oh man so um in a good way, in a good way. So it's always a challenge to consolidate as much as I can for packages. And then uh, for those that do multiple classes in a month that pay the fee, I try to give back a little on shipping if I possibly can. Hi, Judy Bobo. Um, <laughs> me, 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 please. Yes. So I did want to talk to you guys really quick about three things that I have coming up because there is a new catalog launching. The annual catalog goes live May 3rd and there are three different things that I'm promoting right now. Um, I did a video on, um, last Friday talking about my DSP sampler. Hi, Linda from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Uh, the DSP sampler, um, and the product share and the in color club. And for about five minutes, I'm going to take a little time right now. And just as long as I've got everybody, um, um, Mary Carls, I see your note here. <laughs> you want the flowering field. So I'll write your name as I'm talking. Um, so I did a video last week, thir Friday in the afternoon, and it talks about the DSP sampler and the product share, but I thought I'd take a few minutes and just share with you guys really quick what it is. So Mary Carls, I'm just writing your name down. Perfect. I will see mom in the next few days and I'll get it to her. So Zayna loves the new catalog. Yay. Awesome. I do too. All right, you guys. So real quick, the DSP sampler, in case you guys are wondering what that is, I like to use this in classes or when I'm designing cards. The sampler is the white paper and then it has the swatches on it and the color samples on the side. Uh, what you get from me is the white paper, the designer series paper in either squares or rectangles, depending on the size of the paper, and then also the little swatch. And what you would do is glue everything together and then put it in plastic uh, page protectors and a binder if you prefer. Hi, Noreen. So this is the DSP sampler, you guys. If you go to my website here and go to events, this is 
on the calendar of events for May 2nd, okay? So the other thing is a product share. So calendar of events on my website, go to May 3rd, and I go through what the product share is. Now, this is a sampling of a year ago, um, and if um, I, ha I this is one I have extra, and I keep it as a sample to show you guys. So Sandy, I got you for the DSP sampler. And then like you get assortment of ribbon, you get the embellishments and you get the pack of paper. So if you want all the details on what I'm doing for the annual catalog, the annual catalog is a little different because they have stuff that carries over and then they have new stuff. And some of you have gotten some of the stuff that's carried over and some of you are brand new to Stampin' Up. And so I do a la carte options where you can get new ribbon, carryover ribbon, new embellishments, carryover embellishments, the whole paper pack, and then I also have a packaging. So I have six different options, but all of that info, you're very welcome, Sandy. All of that information can be found on my calendar of events for May 3rd, and I'm looking for people that are wanting to sign up. I can get your name on the list to sign up. Hi, Shireen from South Africa. Woohoo! Hi. Uh, DSP Sampler's the best is what Naughty Nancy says. Yay! Okay, then the last thing here I want to talk to you guys about is the In Color Club. So, what is a club? A club is when, okay, let's talk here. A club is when you get a, a group of people together and you commit to placing a certain amount of orders every month. And so I do a card class that is a club. And the second Monday of the month for like however many people are in the club, that's how many months we meet. And then we always just roll it over and start again. Everybody takes a turn being a hostess and getting the host credit. So this is a little different type of a club. It's more of a virtual club. And how it works is you would get, and I'll show you all the products that you would get every month. <laughs> Hi, Joan from Washington State. Every month you would get the color that is assigned to you and it would be a set price. And then one of those five months, you are the hostess and get the host rewards um, that I'm offering and a free gift for being part of the club. And uh, I look for five people. So I think last year I had two clubs because I had 10 people total. And what it is, it's starting May 3rd when the new catalog launches. And um, I'll show you what you get with it. Hi, Elaine Rebeck. Uh, so for five months, it's $61 for porch pickup and $71 for if you need it mailed to you, which is fine. I can definitely put it in a padded envelope. But each month you would get the color ink pad that is... Um, assigned to you. So let, let's say May, um, everybody's loving the Tahitian Tide. So let's say May, you get Tahitian Tide. You would get the ink pad. And then the next four months, you'd get the other ink pads. You'd also get that month, the ink refill. And then you'd get the four remaining ones the next five, four months. The first month, you would get um, the case. Um, hi, Robin. Hi, Jean Benson. You get the marker, and yeah, that one. And then the next four months, you get the other four markers. One month, the first month, you get the baker's twine, and then the, you get the rest the next four months. You get your set of blends, and then the next few months, you'd get the, the other ones. You'd get your color of the glimmer paper. You'd get your color of the designer series paper. And if we're curious, I'm a little curious what this looks like. Hi, Vicki. I haven't opened this up, you guys. <laughs> you know I hate my little plastic flap, so I like to cut things like that. And so this is what the designer series paper looks like. You would get your color the month that you have uh, that assignment. And then this is, oh, I like that one. And some flowers. Okay, so you would get your color that month of the designer paper. You'd also get your four note cards and envelopes of the matching color that month. And then you'd also get your pack of cardstock, okay? And then the other four months. So what's happening is you're getting one color and four other people that month are getting their color. And then the next month it rotates around. Hi, Carol Lee Crab. So um, what's awesome about it is you get the, a free gift. The month that you're hostess, you get $25 of host credit from me. And this is a free gift to you. There are some um, sweet strawberry ones up there, or sweet sorbet, <laughs> but you get your in-color gems. This is a really hard thing to divide up every month. So what I decided is the month that you're the hostess, you get this, which is valued at $8 before shipping and tax. And then you get to pick $25 out of the catalog. Um, anything that you want, it could be host reward items or it could be anything that's current. It could even be from the clearance rack. And hi, Susie Snow. If you want to add 
um, anything to the order that month from friends and family to build up your workshop, you would get more host credit. So this all equates to about $250 for the month. So you're starting at a basis of $250, which is $25 host credit. If you would even add $50, it would bump you up to the next tier, which is $300. And then you make 12%, which is $36 in host credit. So I'm giving away the host rewards for you guys to be part of this club. Um, but the one thing is, if you join the club, the order for this club every month does not qualify for you getting a free class because you are getting the host reward the month that you are the hostess, plus you're getting the free gift, okay? So I wanted to go over that with you guys in a little detail in case anybody was curious how it works. Um, so it would you'd have to make your decision. If you think you want it all and you just wanna break it up over five months, you can do that payment plan of the $61 for porch pickup or 71 if you want it mailed. So. I just wanted to take a little time and explain that to you. I have three people already signed up and uh, I'm looking for more. So awesome. All right. So we'll put this stuff out behind me. The colors are gorgeous. You guys, everybody is loving the blues. There are a lot of blues, <laughs> a lot of blues. Um, and uh, the I like or like so we were missing our Misty Moonlight, you guys, but this color is gonna be very similar to Misty Moonlight. It's a little brighter, I think, but yes, yes. So Judy, it is $71 each month for five months, and you would pay me every month. It's, you don't have to pay it up front. You would just pay it every month, um, and that's that. so that's basically, that includes, so $61 is to my house here with shipping and tax, and then the $10 extra is for the priority padded envelope and all of your month, like whatever you have for the month, all will fit into a priority padded envelope. So, oh yes, so the new in colors are awesome. So yeah, and it helps break it up so that you can still get everything, but it kind of helps it to be on a budget type thing. So, all right, let's get this back here yet. All right, if you guys ever have, oh, you're very welcome, Judy Bobo. If you guys ever have questions, reach out to me. I do have to tell you something though. Um, <laughs> You guys, it's crazy. So I have a, a Apple phone up here that uh, does not have cell cell service. It has my internet. It works off of my house internet. Um, yeah, I have to show you guys. I don't know if I should show you. I'll show you at the very end. But what happens is if you guys text me to my cell phone number, but via your Apple iPhone, I don't get it into my cell phone, which is a Samsung phone. So I just looked at that and there are about 10 text messages over the last two months from people asking for things. So if you haven't um, gotten a response to me, just know that might be why. If your uh, iPhone is texting my iPhone, I don't see that. I only use this iPhone for this video camera up here, you guys. Um, so there's a whole bunch of random numbers in there asking for different things and I have no idea who you are if you don't put your name in the text message. So. I'm gonna have to play a little detective work when I have a little time. Whew, yeah. Hi, Francis Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah. I looked at that and I'm like, oh, another place for people to reach out to me in another way that I didn't know I even had possible. So that's how it goes though, you guys. So I would have to say email is always the safest bet to get a hold of me. <laughs> All right. So what do we have? Oh, um, Kelly Lamb, my cousin, who she does the Technique Thursdays for me usually, you guys. Um, I checked and we had severe winds and her internet has been down. She recorded the Technique Thursday for you guys last week already. Um, hi, Latokia. And she wasn't able to upload it. So she's going to keep trying. Today is her son's birthday and she has a lot going on with the Children's Museum, so she's working on it. But I will share with you guys the card. So when the time comes and she does get Technique Thursday up, you'll wanna watch it because she made this cute, adorable card featuring Easter friends and the stitched greenery and then some of the mint, uh, like soft velour ribbon. Um, <laughs> I try to keep track of everything, but sometimes I don't do so good. But so this is her Technique Thursday, just so you guys can see the card. I don't know if she stamped. Nope, she didn't stamp on the inside. But when you guys see that video pop up, she'll talk about that and go through that with you guys. So we are going to do, let's grab our first card. <coughs> so, all right. Hi, Sue Thomas. 
Yeah, it was cute. You guys, everybody loves the Easter Bunny. Everybody does. It is so adorable. Okay, so we're going to get the party started, you guys. <laughs> okay, we're going to start with the Paradise Palms. And I will show you a sample of it so you guys can see what we're going to be making. And then, oh, we're going to do roll call first, though, you guys. So, Doris Munson, you need to look in your package to make sure you have your monthly cards because I did mail them out to you on March 31st. It showed delivered April 2nd. And so when you message saying you don't have them yet, that concerned me because they were in a package that showed delivered. Fingers crossed they're in there and you just didn't really see them. So I'm hoping that you have them. All right, roll call, you guys. <laughs> it is the April monthly class. Sandy Wicklander, uh, Carla Cordes, Angela Knutson, and Barb Barco, Jeannie Parker, Deb Moynan, Wendy Westmerlin, Deanna Stell, Debbie Schultz, with a Z, Susan Reed, Becky Gandolfo, Doris Munson, Sue Somerville, Barb Johnson, Jean Maxwell, Carmen Melendez, Lynn Beasley, Sherry Pemberton, Tammy Steckling, Cindy Runtree, Deb Norman, Susie Stocks, Judy Bobo, Dee Serena, Brenda Credwig, Marsha Dean, Kelly Bird, Mary Carls, and Pam Newhauser. Woohoo! Bunch of you guys are watching. I can see that. Um, so I did mention I have a uh, one spot open right there, number 30. I'm waiting for that person's name <laughs> to get put there. Um, I have the set of cards right over there. Uh, they're ready to get popped in the mail, you guys. So without further ado, we're going to start though. So Paradise Palms is what is featured for the first card. Uh, this set um, has some awesome dies. And this set is carrying over to the new annual catalog. I cannot recall if it's, oh my gosh, you guys, there's a, there's a rhinestone right there. <laughs> Blinged up my dies. So the set is carrying over. I just can't recall if it's carrying over as a bundle or separate. Um, Laura Sullivan, I don't have you down for this class. So that means that I might not have a number 30. And that means that Laura, we will investigate we will investigate what happened with yours. So you are correct. I didn't call you. So I'm going to uh, see once where we're at with yours. So I'm not going to say I have kits left then, okay? <laughs> we're going to leave it there. <laughs> All right, Paradise Palms is a set of dies right here and matching stamps. And the card was designed in a manner that you, for those that are taking the class, um, you really didn't need a lot for the outside here. You just need a sentiment right here. And then we did use some stamps on the inside for a focal image. Hi, Kathy Groves. Thanks for, for sharing. I appreciate it. So there's that. Um, inks that we need are Daffodil Delight, Memento, and the Calypso Coral. And with this one, it's awesome. A lot of people chose the Retirement Wishes. Uh, for the sentiment on the inside and there's also happy birthday the font is super cool um, this is carrying over judy i just don't remember if it's carrying over as a bundle or if it's carrying over as separate stamp and dies um, if it's carrying over separately you lose the 10 percent discount so we're going to make this as a birthday card and we're going to grab the kit here so for those that got the class with me thanks for sharing marcia i appreciate it um, what you'd have in your kits, you'd have two pieces of paper that are the same size, um, white and Calypso Coral, four by five and a quarter. That one's embossed with the painted texture embossing folder. And then the New Horizons. So this comes as a six by six. So to be crafty and clever, we did two inch strips of paper. Hi, Shirley Aston. So two inches and then it's five and a quarter high. And that makes, so everybody's going to have a slightly different looking scene, right? So some will have more pink, some will have more orange, yellow, and then green at the bottom. These little labels come from the ornate frames and you will need to cut this one in half, uh, the vertical, because when it comes time, that will go on one, the back side, and one will go on the right side, okay? So those are for our labels. Hi, Jean Terwilliger. You guys should have a little sun. Come, thank you to Anna Rabadou. She did all the die cutting for all these cards for you guys. Um, little sun here out of crushed curry. That little sun actually is a die in this set. I lied, you guys. 
this stamp, okay, Sandy says they're sold separately. Okay, so perfect. Sandy said going forward, they're gonna be separate. So you lose the 10% discount um, if you buy it in the new annual catalog. You guys, this label actually comes from this set. It does not come from Ornate Frames. So I told you wrong. It comes right in this die set. There's actually a little ferny thing in there too. And this really cool die that has detail um, for borders. You guys should have two palm trees. You will need to take... Oh, thanks, Kathy Groves. Carrying over as an individual set. You'll need to take your pokey tool and poke out any kind of little bits and parts that you've got there. Um, I did have, unfortunately, you guys, one person that I had in person, their, uh, their, their little middle part here wasn't cut out so good, so we had to rerun it through. I'm hoping that you guys that got your palm trees, they poke out okay for you. Um, your kit, <laughs> I was a little nicer to you guys. For your kit, I actually gave you a two and a quarter by five and a quarter strip of black. For me, I use scraps for my kit. So uh, in all in all, it's gonna look the same, but I'm not gonna have a middle section of black <laughs> paper, all right? Then you have a card base that is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And take your bone folder and burnish your edge for that. So I think we'll get our stamping done right away. And then we can move our stamps out of the way. And we're gonna grab a little scrap of paper. So these are red rubber stamps, you guys. So I am not gonna pull out my piercing mat to use them uh, because there's enough cushion uh, with the foam that's behind the rubber. So we're gonna start with our sentiment. I always like to do a sentiment first because if you do it crooked, hi Darla Zell. If you do it crooked, then you can just flip it over and redo it. I generally have a lot more success getting my focal images straight right away than I do my sentiments. So we're gonna put this guy a little bit more to the left. Perfect. And then that's it for the coral. Yeah, it's a very pretty card. It's very, makes me feel like Nobody has snow around the world. <laughs> Everybody's got palm trees and is in paradise. Um, Deb, the label it has to be. Oh, well, no, it has to be because it's in here unless it's not supposed to be in here and it's from Ornate Frames. So Deb, you got me wondering. You guys, we're going to take, we're going to correct this. Nope, it wouldn't be in the annual catalog. It was brought in during the mini here. So let's just look, you guys. We're gonna answer this. All right, Dana, have a good night. Thanks for sharing, Doris. Oh, you're so right, Deb. I, you know what, then I was right the first time I said it. She's right. So that label, <laughs> it doesn't belong in my set of dies here. <laughs> All right, so I was right the first time and then I corrected myself incorrectly and then Deb corrected me, so I love it. So. This guy does not belong in here. <laughs> yes, you're right, Deb. So this guy does truly belong with ornate frames, like I originally thought. So what happened was, when Anna was done die cutting, all my dies came back and I put them all in here. So I will have to put this guy back in his happy home. He was sad because his friends were missing him. All right, we've got that mystery solved. Thanks, Deb. <laughs> I would have left that die in there probably forever. <laughs> so we're gonna put our little sun up in the sky there. Mystery solved, I love it. That's teamwork makes the dream work, you guys. Okay, keeping me all on my toes. So we're gonna put a little palm tree in the bottom here. Hi, Debbie Schultz. So what I would recommend is doing your palm tree top part first. Now, I have issues with my memento pads, you guys. I will be completely honest. I am not the biggest fan of memento. Sometimes I'll use basic gray when I want something dark. I just re-inked these pads and they still just do not hold the ink. So you got to you saw how much I I've worked on that. So and then what you have to do is get it onto your cardstock and let it marinate for a second because it really is it needs help. <laughs> All right, so that's good. We really worked at that. And then there is a trunk. <laughs> and you want to try to get your trunk to line up with your top part. Perfect. Now, 
if you have this stamp set at home and you are so inclined, <laughs> there are coconuts here. <laughs> they look like they fit in the tree nicely and they're very entertaining to work with. So Chris and I designed this card together <laughs> and we got lots of giggles out of those coconuts. So the other thing then that we need to stamp is our sentiment, which says wishing you a warm and beachy kind of day. And we're gonna practice. Okay, so the, the right side needs to come up a hair. I usually move that off and onto a darker surface so that I can see where I'm stamping. And I'm gonna give it that second. And there we go. So you guys, we have all of our stamping done. So let's, ink, let's shut that up. And then we're gonna work a little bit on our assembly. So glue. And because I have my strips, what I'm going to do is glue my strips on. Now you guys would just probably glue the back of your designer paper and then put it down. What I'm gonna do here though, is put glue down my strips. This is if you really wanna save paper. <laughs> you can definitely use these three quarter inch strips depending on how wide this is, but I'll tell you, it makes it so much easier when it's just one piece of paper. So now I'm gonna kind of eyeball that I'll give myself that eighth inch margin. I noticed that I did make my strips long too. So you're, we're gonna be okay guys. So this is gonna go right here. So we've got just that little eighth inch black coming out. And then our card base here is gonna put our inside mat in. That'll go here. All right, so back to this guy. Because I cut my strips even too long, all I'm going to do is take my scissors and trim that. And now it should, in essence, look exactly what you guys have um, for a mat. So I would grab your Stella pen, if you have one, and Stella your tree tops while you have them not put down because if you go over the edge, then it kind of hits the white paper instead. But it's so cool to Stella these trees. You can really see the glitz on them when you Stella them. So we're gonna do that first. And I didn't go all the way down to the bottom because some of that gets covered up and cut off. So we're just going to Stella these guys. And then while you're at it, you've got your little son here, you could do him. And then, uh, let's see here. We need to, before we put this onto the coral piece, we need to get our ribbon on here. So you guys should have a slip of ribbon and what you're gonna have to do, it's probably like this long. What you're gonna have to do is cut yourself enough that you can tuck your tails behind. You do not have enough to wrap it all the way around and then tie it. I have enough here for you to be able to just cut off a little bit like this, and we're gonna tape that behind, and then you have enough left over to tie a little knot. So grab your tear and tape or your double-sided tape, and we're going to attach our tails behind the back side here with this. So this petal pink ribbon is part of the New Horizons suite. It comes with misty moonlight and petal pink. And if you guys recall for the New Horizons class, I didn't pull that ribbon in. <laughs> didn't find a way to pull it in. So here you guys get to see it in action. All right, so there's that. All right, you guys, I know exactly how this happens. I just got kicked out of the video. So that's why it always says, oh, you guys are just joining, but you probably just got kicked out and are joining again. All right, so we're back to business there. And then I'm gonna cover up the gooey part here and leave my backing on because this is where somebody asked me yesterday, why would you use black dimensionals? When do they come in handy? Well. Black dimensionals come in handy when you are securing down cardstock that is darker, like black or a dark color, because then you don't see white dimensionals poking out the side. So this is a great use now for your black dimensionals. And so this then will get adhered onto the Calypso Coral Mat. 
And again, I'm not taking off those side pieces. If you do, the paper's gonna wanna stick flat there versus be raised. So this then, it's gonna go centered left to right. And I'm hopefully flush at the top and flush at the bottom. If for any reason you're hanging over the edge a little bit, all you need to do is take your scissors and then trim and then you'll be flush at the top. And if you need to trim the bottom, you can use that coral piece as a guide. All right, so far so good. So now I would take my palm trees and flip them over and then they make these small dimensionals. And what I would do is put a small black dimensional in the middle of the back of each one of these. And hi, Kathy Jackson from <laughs> Iola, Wisconsin. Yes, you're right. Always better late than never. <clears throat> so we're gonna put this guy off to the side and a little taller. You guys notice I didn't put any adhesive down my trunks because that allows me to kind of get these where I want them. And so that's right about there. And then we're gonna put a little black, or a big black dimensional on the back of our sun. And that's gonna go up here. And now this is where I can take my scissors and trim off my trunks right here so that they're not hanging out the bottom. Hi, Vicki Fritz. All right. Now this piece, we had these ends. So what we're gonna have to do is put a little bit, hi, Amy, the tropical feel. Doesn't it make it feel like you guys wanna be out on the beach instead of all this howling wind and the snow and the rain that we're all getting? All right, so then this will get attached. So you guys, whenever you want a matting for your label, but you don't have the next size to go with it, just cut yourself a second one and then cut it in half vertically, cut it in half horizontally, however you want to. You could even just put extra on the bottom. So that's ready to go right here. And now what I'm gonna do is grab the white dimensionals. We're gonna put a few of these along the back. So what's gonna happen is wherever these dimensionals are, they will hopefully hit my palm trees. I'm gonna put them right in the middle. So hopefully they're gonna hit my palm tree trunks so that will keep them adhered down. And I wanna see a little of this petal pink ribbon right on the bottom. So it kind of creates a little ledge for it. And then you guys should have maybe about, I'm guessing that much left of your ribbon. I think my mom had cut maybe eight or seven inches. So all you have to do with this one and take it and make a little knot like that. And you're gonna take a glue dot and put that right on the corner because then it makes it look like it is tied and wrapped around. And that's gonna go right there. Grab your ribbon scissors. You can cut your tail. Oh, Wendy Westmoreland, hi girl. You found it, we're just on our first card. All right, so then flip that over and we're almost done with this one though. So you're gonna put a little adhesive along the back and adhere that to the front of your card. We remembered Stella right away, which is awesome. Yeah, you guys, Facebook made changes last week, Friday. And I absolutely hated when Facebook makes changes because you waste time trying to find the things that you knew exactly how to find it. And it's so dumb because it's in the videos, you guys. So if you're in your cell phone, this is what changed for me. You can't find the videos. Where did they put the videos? It used to be posts about photos, videos. You have to click on photos and then it comes down here and you can pick videos or photos. Dumb, that's all I can say. But if you're on your, um, if you're on, and that's not gonna refresh now, it's gonna refresh. Um, if you're on your tablet or your computer, it has a little section for videos. But if you're watching it from your phone, you can't find it as easy. So Facebook changes stuff every, a year, six months, I don't know, but it really 
<laughs> you guys want to hear me? You get salty about stuff. Facebook can do that to me. <laughs> oh, when they change their stuff. Not good. All right, you guys, in your kit. So, but we're not here to complain about Facebook <laughs> and the stupid things they do. We're here to make some beautiful cards. So you guys should have two of the polished pink dots. These are from the Crane of Fortune or Symbols of Fortune or the Crane set in the, the a mini catalog. There's big and small and there's petal pink and then there's clear. So the petal pink look completely amazing and awesome with the Calypso Coral. New and improved isn't always good, I know. It makes you have to work harder for it. So, all right, you guys, we got our first card done. Happy birthday to you. So, one down. At the end of the class, you guys, what I want to do is I um, have these cards that I want to announce the winner. So, so I, that's, don't let me forget to do that, you guys. Plus, we will do the door prize drawing for a lucky winner who ordered to get this class. So, hi, Barbara Moynan. woo -hoo! Barb's in the house. Okay, so there's one card done, you guys. I made it, the card was, you know, a matter of stamping a little bit and stamping a little bit, and you guys have a card that looks identical to mine. So, again, Chris and I designed this one together. We had a lot of fun. That was back in December we designed this card. <laughs> All right, so this is that petal pink ribbon. It comes in a combo pack with the Misty Moonlight. All right, let's move this one. Hi, Jennifer, Merle Hampshire. All right, let's move that out. And we're gonna go on to our ladybug. So let's set him over here, out of my way. All right, yeah, fun card, you guys. So we're gonna do ladybug next. And the ladybug looks like this. Yeah, very nice and easy. I definitely agree, <laughs> Judy, I love it. Oh, thanks, Gaddy Jackson, thanks, Barb. All right, thanks, Melody. We're gonna do our ladybug. So. This is in the new mini catalog as well. And there is a punch that goes with it that looks like this. And it is also carrying over to the new annual catalog. If I had to guess, I, I would guess that it's carrying over as a bundle, but I can't recall exactly off the top of my head. We're going to need a black memento pad, and we're also going to need the real red pad. So... um there should also be old olive. So old, we got our Christmas colors going on here. Old olive, real red. Old olive is for our leaf. Our ladybug innard is red. And then all of our outlines and words are in black and our little dots are in black. So that's what we're gonna need for this one. Um, in your kit, you guys will have some brushed brush butterflies, okay? And I already made your bow. <laughs> so you guys that got these kits for me, you have to take in the bow that I made for you. There is some real red ribbon that is part of the new mini catalog, and then there's the black glittered organdy. I made the bow with both ribbons at the same time as part of your bow for your kit, okay? So that's already made for you. Then you're gonna have this little sacrificial lamb. That's what I call a piece of paper that is only meant to make a ribbon look better. So that's what's gonna go underneath and that's this right there. So that's what you should have. You'll have a black body and a, some red wings. You have two labels. So we're gonna do this label similar to the other one except for slightly different. So uh, the label comes from the set um, Love and Laughter. It's in the mini catalog. And what we're gonna do this time is we're just gonna slightly offset it so that this label kind of creates like a background for the, the white label. Oh man, the magic of TV, I have mine done already. Uh, you guys should have a white piece of paper about that big. It's probably two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And it is for you to stamp your leaf on. Everybody cries when they find out that they have to fussy cut it. I shouldn't say they cry, they don't really cry. <laughs> but they give me a face. And so you're gonna have to stamp your leaf and then we have to fussy cut it. You should have a little circle and if you guys recall, I had a class in February that was with rainbows and it had a little white circle cut out. I actually saved every circle from that card to use for this class. So that's where that circle is from the layering circles. The black and white polka dot, pe <laughs> polka dot bikini, you know, polka dot paper comes from the artfully composed. And so that's just gonna be a mat on the front. You guys have two pieces that are the same size again, four by five and a quarter. This is one of my favorite embossing folders. You know why? 
because it's called the Hive 3D embossing folder. And we are in the Hive, real red. And then there's a basic white four by five and a quarter. And then high rows. And then we have our basic black, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And you're gonna take it, fold it in half, and burnish your edges. All right, what do we need to stamp? Let's get stamp happy for a second. And because I want to show you how the leaf gets stamped, we're actually gonna grab a scrap. All right, I have a different scrap we're gonna use. I can no longer use the stitched label or the stitched oval, you guys. So I think the leaf will fit on there. So yes. So I just want to show you about the leaf. Now, these are photopolymer stamps, you guys. So I would definitely pull out the piercing mat here. And you don't have to do anything with this black body, but we do have to stamp the wings, a sentiment, our green leaf, and our inside. So first things first, how about we do the leaf? You guys, this is a very solid image. You have to make sure that you ink up your stamp very well, okay? You can't just go like that. It's not going to turn out so good. You really have to ink it up. If you don't have, hi, Barb Johnson. If you don't have a really well inked pad, a really well inked pad, I think I said that right, a really good, a really, a pad that's inked so good, you might consider re-inking it, but because it's such a solid image, you want to get it as clean of a like stamped, like you just don't want it spotty or splotchy is what I'm trying to get at. And when you go to stamp it on here, you want to push everywhere. I don't know if you kind of saw how the color kind of transitioned as it hit the paper, but you really want that to marinate because it's such a smooth image. You might, like you can see on this one, it kind of looks splotchy. That's what will happen. And it's not bad. I'm just trying to help you figure out a way to make it not look that way. So you can see there's a slight difference in this one. There's more dotty, like missing ink, where that one I feel is a lot more smoother. You can totally tell that there was more ink. It's like there was thicker ink on that side and then less where I was in the middle. But I would be completely happy with this. And now what you'll need to do is once you've stamped it, you do need to take your scissors and fussy cut around it. But we mentioned by the magic of TV, this one's done already. So that's that. And that's it for our old olive. And then we have basic or our memento pad. So we have three things that need to get stamped in black. <clears throat> the ladybug is going to be your downfall if you are not good at lining things up. And the way that you get better at it, I'll be honest with you, is by practicing. Um, it's a natural leaf in nature. Yeah, Judy, I love it. You really, I mentioned earlier about my memento pads. You really need to get ink on them. And when you go to stamp this ladybug, do your practice first. You guys, I've done this a bunch. I've made a bunch of these ladybug cards. I know that I have to let the ink marinate on my paper uh, for a little bit. Hi, Carissa. Hi, Ethel King. And let that sit on here so that you get a nice solid image. Um, you might even consider basic gray for this because basic gray uh, has a nice, it's a foam pad, so it has a nice even coat. Uh, the the little, so we're going to save the inside. That's the, that's going to be the hard part. So we got to get our little ladybug dots. Now, my dad explained to me that this is not a ladybug. This is an Asian beetle. So <laughs> he knows his bugs, I guess. Yay, Ethel's in the house from New Jersey. Inking up really good. Now, when you go to the red cardstock, red, <laughs> you got it still lined up really well. That's good, Angela. It, I mean, the more you guys practice that stuff, the better that you do get. And you'll surprise yourself. <laughs> but I am giving this a really long shot to get the dots on the red cardstock. Stamping on a darker cardstock is harder than a white one, okay? So there's the wings, and now we have our sentiment. Hi, Julie Bierschbach. Oh, you have two more surgeries, Rose. Oh, my goodness. Are they coming up soon? <laughs> we got to get you out of the hospital. <laughs> got to get you, got to break you out. Have those surgeries, heal up, and get home so you can stamp. It says, you can bug me anytime, Gail Kane was at class the other day, and it was hilarious. 
She said she was giving this to her daughter because she bugs her all the time. <laughs> so, all right. So it says you can bug me anytime. And that was in Memento. And now we're done with Memento. So we can set these guys off to the side. Now what's last is our real red. This is another one. Hi, Linda Bailey. It's a smooth stamp, so you want to make sure you guys, it turns like fluorescent orange, kind of. <laughs> All right, that's what the photopolymer does with red. So make sure you're inked up really good. My advice for this is look at the three holes, and I don't know if you can see there's three holes, and what I'm trying to do is line those three holes up with the ladybug, and then I look around the edge to make sure I have the edge that I'm nice and straight. And I kind of shut my R, I shut my eyes and cross my fingers and hope it's good. Ah, that's not good, Rose. I'm thinking of you. And look at that, you guys. By lining up the holes is how you could easily get it to be within the black lines. Okay, so because this says you can bug me anytime, it can pretty much be for anything. So I'm gonna leave it blank on the inside so whoever gets the card uh, can do whatever they want with it. And we're gonna work on assembly. So this gets glue, this gets glue, and the black label. What we're gonna do is put a little line of glue just along the top. We're gonna put glue the back of the designer paper and the back of our white paper. Hi, Pauline. All right, this goes on our inside. And get that lined up. This designer paper gets nestled to the left and then centered top to bottom on our hive embossed red piece. And then the label gets offset. And let's see how I did it. All right, so we've got it so that you can see it a little on the left, on the bottom, and on the right. Okay, now we have to get our sacrificial lamb piece and we're gonna glue that down. So I'm gonna tell you why. Because if you would just put this down like this, which is not the worst, but you would see the seam on the sides here and you'd see the white polka dots through there and that's all right. But when we glue this red strip down, it's basically three eighths of an inch by four inches and I have the luxury of having my card here so I can kind of line things up. I wanna do it a little higher this time. So we're gonna put that guy up just a hair. And then that red strip goes down first and then tear and tape on the back side and we're going to adhere. Oh, Linda, you can still get the stamp set. <laughs> I, would, I, like, I would say with this one, I would definitely wanna get the stamp set because it has all these awesome things. And this little daisy matches the daisy punch that's still carrying over as well. I would go back, Linda, and get the stamp set if I were you. <laughs> all right, so the black glittered organdy ribbon now goes over the top of this. And now you can see why I did that because it creates a continuous flow from left to right uh, with the ribbon. And then we are gonna take the tear and tape and put a little bit more over the top, and that creates our ribbon sandwich. Ribbit. All right, that will get a little adhesive. Now with these embossing folders that are more rigid like this, I do tend to put more adhesive in the middle. Oh, the ladybug is adorable. The red with the black and polka dots. It just was um, so fun making this card, designing. So the circle is going to go down first. Now in class last night, they kind of got creative. Uh, Katie was here and she put some brown uh, sponging around the edge of the white to kind of make it look a little more, um, not so stark, I should say, with the white. But this is gonna, I'm actually gluing this white piece down. So we're gonna put a little adhesive on here and it kind of goes right over the edge. So Judy, what I have on the embossing is the raised hexagons go up unless you like the inverted up. It really is a personal preference, but I like the raised up. So this circle kind of covers some of the ribbon slightly like that. 
And then how I did my leaf, you guys. I have dimensionals here. I am known for doing multi-dimensionals or multi-types of glue on the same thing. So what I did is I put adhesive around the edges. And what I'm going to do is put liquid glue in the middle so that it goes flat in the middle. Yeah, they both look nice. All right, so then this guy's gonna go right here. And when I put this down, I'm gonna press in the middle to make sure that that glue sticks. Now, I think that I put my label flat. Yep, I'm pretty sure I did. But, so that's now glued flat in the middle. And the reason I glued it flat in the middle is because that's where our little ladybug is gonna be hanging out. So for the label, I used tear and tape. And I'm gonna put a track at the top and at the bottom so that it hits both the ribbon and the cardstock. You could pop it up if you wanted to. Um, this is gonna go, I wanna see some of the ribbon over there. And it kind of meets right there, that's what I'm thinking, because my bow is gonna come over here. I'm gonna have it overlapping just a hair like that. Okay, ladybug time. So I would put two small black dimensionals on the wings. Hi, Tabitha, like that. And then what we're gonna do, it's just like it's cape. <laughs> we're gonna put liquid glue along where his neck area is. And so that's gonna be flat on his body right there. So flat to his head, but then the wings are going up like that. Okay, so you can see that they're dimensionalized, but then we're gonna take and pop him up. Hi, Marsha. We're gonna pop him up like that. We'll put him right like he's hanging out in his little leaf. And, uh, mm -hmm. hey, Marsha Long from Texas. So glue dots, you guys, for this bow. So. <laughs> If you've never made a bow with two ribbons, it's the same as making a bow with one ribbon. I definitely did use my bow maker and I held both ribbons at the same time and they came around and I just kept them both at like together the whole time. And so what I would use for this is the glue dot, something like that. Bow is right here. Now when I put that on, so it makes it look like everything's wrapped around and it's like a little present like a bow. But you look at the tails. <laughs> They're all wonky. That's what I say. Wonky bow tails. So I am definitely going to make them go where I want to. So I put a glue dot there. And then this one needs a little help too. So, hi Leanne. So then this one's going to go right there. But now <laughs> it still needs more help because that black one is going every penny. Look at this. I'm throwing it away. Don't worry, girl. I gotcha. And then... This is gonna go right there and we're gonna just tuck that on top of it. Hi, Randy Schultz, joining late. And then we're gonna do one more over here on that one. So we've basically told our, our tails of our bows that we want them going exactly where we want them. And once you have them where you want them, then take your scissors and trim them. So I like to go at an angle Cut them both at the same time. And we're almost done. I'm gonna grab my Stella pen and we're gonna Stella our body. And we're gonna Stella some. So be careful Stella-ing over the wings because you don't wanna have the black ink bleed on you. Like that. And then in your kit, you guys have some butterflies. You either have two big and a small, or you'll have two small and a big. Everybody kind of got whatever, like one of, like two and then one. And because these butterflies come two sizes. And I'm seeing here, you have to be very careful picking them off because sometimes that glue stays there. And you, what you have to do is you have to get underneath the adhesive and then the because the adhesive is actually shaped like a butterfly. Is that not crazy? And then this will go here. And I'm gonna, I have a different pack sitting over there. I'm actually gonna use two big ones on this one. 
And then I'm gonna go find, I have a different pack because we have the flowering tulips class coming up. So I have another pack of these guys. I'm gonna put a little small one up here. So you guys have three butterflies for right now. I'm only, <laughs> the Asian beetle, yes. <laughs> I'm only putting two, but I will go back and add a third one. So you should have your butterflies floating around in your kit somewhere. They are in there. And that is it for this one, I think. So let's take a close up, you guys. Promise. Okay, pretend there's another guy right there. <laughs> so our little Asian beetle. And then here's our inside and our little happy dude down below. So there you go. We got our Asian beetle card done. <laughs> All right, hi, Gwen Petrashek. And let's tuck this in here. So the last card of our E of the evening. Oh, if you guys are looking for a different sentiment to put in here, we found this one. This works really nicely. It's got happy birthday, get well soon, I like you a lot, thank you, and hello. All of that from Blossoms in Bloom would fit in there. This bright and so cute and cheery card. All right, so before we keep going, we're gonna get some stuff in order here. Gotta take care of business. Squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. Let's clean these up and get them back in their tote. So I have this class one more time, you guys. I had this class Monday night with my club. I had it Wednesday at one with my afternoon girls. I had it Wednesday at six with my evening gang. And you guys, Tyler, my boyfriend, who helped me design the next card, he took this class last night and um, he had a ball. It was his first time he ever took a class with me. Um, there is one more card. Yes, I just needed to get my stamps out of the way. So we're cleaning up shop before we keep going, <laughs> Marsha. Um, the last card is by far the best one, I think, personally. So let's get our little ladybugs out of here. And this one, and we're going to move our palm trees out of the way. Got those cleaned up. And we're going to pull in this one right here. So... So this next card has a little story. All right, I gotta show you guys. This is the next card and I gotta go get something to show you what the story is. So if you don't know, Tyler is my boyfriend and he loves nature, outdoors, all the hiking, camping, tra trails, all that stuff. And he's very supportive of my, uh, my, uh, my passion. <laughs> and uh, this, so what Tyler will do is he will go around the room and he will put stars and acorns and silver bottle caps and stuff on all of the, his favorite cards. And they're always the naturey, outdoorsy themed cards. So this is the card I had up on my display board of what the classes that are coming up. So he went and put these on, but I believe it was Cindy Runtree, right, Cindy? You sent this star. So Tyler got a gold star from some, I, I believe it was Cindy, right? You're gonna, I know you're watching Cindy, so you'll have to let us know if this was from you. I'm, I, I, had, I had to guess. I still have the card. It's just in the house. Um, so we put the, so Tyler got three good grades on this card. And how this card came about is I knew I wanted to use the hats off like bun. And I didn't even care. Oh, it was Cindy. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Cindy. That's what I had in my head. I, I always like to make sure I'm right before I say things, but I didn't go in the house and check before. Um, so I knew I wanted to use this hat builder dies. You guys, I hadn't used it yet. And I absolutely, um, thought it was the coolest set. You know, the dies are still available, but the, the stamp set is not, and this is not carrying over. So when I was working on this card. I had known that I wanted to do an easel card and I had the base kind of figured out, but I didn't know how I was gonna do this part. And I had it in my head, I was just gonna have this hat kind of like sitting on a, like a shelf or a table or something. So I said, Tyler, come on upstairs and help me design a card. <laughs> So hi, Jackie. Okay, Cindy, yep, Cindy was the star. I love it. Thanks for confirming, Cindy. So Tyler then came up with this path idea. So when you open it up, it's a path, and it's a muddy path, and it kind of fits in with a tree and some rocks, and you guys even have a little linen thread to make it look like dead grass coming out from behind the rocks. So this is how the card came about. So Tyler is very, very um, happy with it. He helped me 
prepare this class too, you guys. He embossed all of this paper for me. So I went ahead and scored everybody's card base at a diagonal, and then he ran them through the machine. And it took him 50 minutes to emboss 56 of these mats. And so I told him he could earn a free class for helping me. <laughs> so he attended class last night, which was awesome. So that's the backstory on that one, you guys, in case the inquiring minds wanted to know. There's one other set that got pulled in, and it's this stamp right here for the dirty path and then the grass. So if you guys don't have oceanfront, you're really okay. You could figure something else out. I'm sure you have other textury background stamps. But we use espresso ink and a sponge dauber and mossy meadow. Yeah, Tyler, Tyler did awesome. He is a great stamper. I will be the first to admit that. I watched him last night and he worked really well. Um, and then we're gonna use here's to the next adventure. And in your kit, you guys will have three stones. They'll either be two gray and a brown or two brown and a gray. That's how that worked. And what we have in our kit here, let's pull out all of our pieces, you guys. There are a lot of little pieces. So be very careful pulling out all your bits and parts. So the tree that you have is from Mountain Air, okay? Um, hats off to Tyler, yeah! <laughs> so he is a keeper. Um, or so you guys are gonna have to poke out your little bits and parts out of your tree. Uh, that, again, is from Mountain Air. Uh, is carrying over. Mountain air is carrying over. So you'll have to pick out those and then get them out of your way. So there's our tree. You guys will have this little die, cut piece and crumb cake. What you need to do with this one, that's where the sponge dauber comes in. It looks just slightly shaded. So grab the sponge dauber. <laughs> uh, he, he doesn't mind. He loves to help me with anything nature-y. So I did have that dipped in the espresso, but there wasn't a lot of ink in there. So I'm gonna just put a little bit more on there. And we're just putting it to make it look like it's a more rugged worn hat. So it just basically put a little brown edging on it. So that's what got done with that. All right, so we're done with the dauber. You should have this little incy tinsy little baby tree, which is from that die set. And that will go on that part. And you know what? Might as well. Let's go ahead and just get those put together. Um, I would use a couple dimensionals behind this crumb cake. And that just goes right in the center of your hat. You guys got all your die cut parts. Like this hat is, you get to see the hat in action. So that's going to go right there. And then you can put a little dimensional behind our tree here. And then that goes right there. So that'll help you so you don't lose some pieces. Okay. Now, I do know that this is a guy card-ish. I mean, it could be a girl card too, you guys, whoever. But guys don't generally like glitter and Stella-ing. Like Tyler was like, you put Stella on the tree. Oh no, <laughs> bad. So I still will put Stella on things, even if I know that Tyler doesn't like it. So, all right. So that's kind of ready for us. So let's shut this just for a second. So you have a piece of designer series paper. This is from Beauty of the Earth, you guys. So um, what I would recommend, and there's no reason why we can't do this right away, let's glue that piece to its mat, okay? So that is a designer series paper, three and three quarter by three and three quarter, going on a mossy meadow four by four. All right, so that gets put on there. And... You have a quarter sheet here. This is five and a half by four and a quarter. And then you have this piece. This is the bark embossing folder. I, uh, the first thing I did is I scored it at a diagonal for you guys. And then Tyler ran it through the embossing. So it does not look like it has a diagonal, but I promise you that as soon as you go to fold it like this, it's going to fold very easily. So um, I would definitely do the the diagonal scoring before the embossing, because if you emboss it and then try, it's gonna be really bumbly. So, all right, take your bone folder and kind of burnish the edge there. The other thing you can do is glue this onto our green, our mossy meadow mat. Okay, and again, I would use a little bit more adhesive because it's a bumbly embossing folder. Hi, Jennifer Jones. All right, that just gets centered right 
on that mat. All right, now we're gonna like kind of stay still for a second and start our stamping and more preparations. But, okay, so we need to know, <laughs> in person they got a special treat because Tyler and I made a mat right here. Tyler and I made this mat. So after we got that design, we liked it and we're like, okay, well, we gotta be able to, to clone this and make it many times. Now, for those of you guys that got the kits from me, what you got is this piece of crumb cake. You have to be creative and make yourself a path. And honestly, how we started off making this path is we took our scissors and we went and we went around it and then we made an inside. That's really all we did to create it. But for those that did the class with me in person, they, it's, when you have to be creative and crafty yourself, it's not always the easiest thing. So we made it super simple for them by giving them our template. And we had them all take this pencil and draw it. So it was really easy for the in-person people to do this. So for those that aren't here in person, <laughs> you'll have to get a little bit clever on how you want your path to be. So now take your paper scissors. And so like, let's pretend I don't have a pencil mark there. This is what you guys are gonna have to do. You're just gonna have to take this, go all the way to the end and round it. And you kind of loop it back, come out. You know, like a path is not straight. When you go in the woods on a hiking trail, they're all in every different direction. So there you've got the outside, but now you've got to do the inside. So pretend I don't have a pencil mark there. All I'm doing is cutting out a little area in the middle. <laughs> yes, you guys have to pave your own path. Right, Cindy? I love it. Yep, everybody's got to have a little challenge of making their own path. All right, so... Ultimately, you're going to end up hopefully with something like this. It's crumb cake. Hi, Melanie Foy. Um, <laughs> I can always mail a temp I email a template. Um, so I thought about that, you guys. I actually did. I thought about taking a picture of this and sending it to you. But how do I know if the picture, when it goes into the picture and you guys print it off, what if it makes it smaller? What if it makes it bigger? What if it's not right? I just... I wasn't quite sure how I was gonna make that be exactly right. So you guys just, it's not rocket science. It's just cutting a paper with some swirls and making a little path. Okay, once you have the path cut out, then I would grab a piece of paper and you have to stamp both sides of the path. If you look at the card, this is, I don't even know which one there, like that. So this one is in the back, right? So it's the, this is the front and then the back. So you do have to stamp the front and the back. Whatever kind of textury stamp you have. Uh, this one is what we found. Uh, There's so many other different things that you can use for texture stamps. So first, set, you're just trying to make it look like a muddy path. I guess the muddier the better in Tyler's eyes. <laughs> you know, God, yeah. He said when he was a kid, he would come home and they would be covered in mud and dirt and his mom would rinse them off with the garden hose before they were allowed in the house. <laughs> so, oh yeah. All right, I'm seeing that my phone is going to die. So let's just charge that in so we don't lose you guys. All right, there we go. Battery power is good. All right, that's it for the path. I don't think we use, oh yes, for the sentiment. Um, we're going to use espresso for the sentiment, which is the vanilla piece right over underneath. <laughs> I knew it was there somewhere. So this says, here's to the next adventure. And I am going to stamp it in brown. This, is, this vanilla piece is our inside. Okay, disclaimer, you guys. Disclaimer. I cut your paper, this vanilla, at four by four. Yeah, so Laura, I thought about, you guys, I did think about putting that path in the PDF, 
but I don't know if it would have been the exact same size if you guys would have printed it or if I would have included it in it. I didn't know if it would come out the same way. Like, because when you take a picture of something, then, and I don't have, I don't have a scanner here, so I couldn't just draw it and scan it. So I did think about it. So guys, give me a little credit. I did think about how to figure out how to put the path in your PDF, but I figure it's not perfect and everybody's paths are going to be different. So gotta just get a little creative with it. So this, you guys, if you, if you leave it how I have it, you will not have um, crumb cake on the top and the bottom. I got, you guys, I accidentally cut it four by four and it should have been a three and three quarter. Hi, Tabitha. It should have been three and three quarter by three and three quarter. So this is your opportunity now. If you want to trim off a quarter inch off of two sides, you can. And um, otherwise, half the people that had in-person class with me left it and half the people wanted me to trim it. So just so you know, I believe the instructions say three and three quarters by three and three quarter, but your actual piece is too big, which is better than too small. I'll be honest with you. So here's to the next adventure. And then on the inside bottom left, I put a little of the grass from the ocean front right at the bottom there. So that's what we've got going on for ink here. And we can put this away. Let's set these there. Hi, Barbara Godby. And I think that might be it for our stamping. So I got ink over there. Look at that. Look at that dirty path. All right. It's okay. If it doesn't come off, it was meant to be there. But I think my little ink eraser will get some of that off. Oh, <laughs> there. Good enough. All right, so let's move this out of the way. So we can glue this onto our inside. And let's see here. That will go here. On the inside. And then what you guys have is that little hat. The hat is also part of that die set. And what you can do is that's going to go right in the bottom right corner like that. And oh, I, I, did you guys notice that? I folded that the wrong way. It needs to actually not get folded back. It actually gets folded. Hi, Carrie Peterson. It actually gets folded like that, okay? So let's go back to here. And we're going to Stella our tree because <laughs> gotta get Stella on stuff, right? So we're gonna Stella up our tree like that. And what I would do is adhere the tree next because, all right, have fun at Bunko, wish you luck. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back, like the trunk of the tree. <laughs> all right, and that's gonna go over here. So you guys be very careful. This designer paper that you got does have trees on it. Some people didn't realize that there was a pattern to it or what it was. They are actually trees. Um, I noticed when some people did it, they glued them on their card that way, and that's okay. Once you get it all put down, you don't really see it, but there is, they are trees. All right, so now, you guys, in your kit, don't lose it. We have about, not quite three inches. I don't remember what my mom cut, but I, you didn't need a lot. So just know that it's really, this thing blends in with your stuff, and it like if you can't see it. So you have about this much linen thread, right? maybe three inches. What you want to do, this is what I did. You guys can find a different way to do it. Cool. But I took about an inch. <laughs> Angela said, I already have my cards and I did that wrong. Nope, you did. I think you're fine. I had it folded the wrong way. You guys, all I'm doing is cutting my little slips like that. So three of them. Grab what I, this is what I'm gonna do. If you have an easier way, go for it. Some people use glue dots and that works too, but you gotta find your path, <laughs> find your path. And it's the bottom one on the left-hand side. And I would put your tear and tape right behind there. And then you're gonna take these little pieces of dead grass, fold them in half, and you're gonna attach the folded end to where the tear and tape is, okay? So you don't need a lot. You're only having about an eighth inch to a quarter inch hanging out the top. And then you're gonna take this last one 
and fold it. So you have three of them. And they might not want to stay, so you got to show them who's boss and push them into the tear and tape. And then I would actually take and put more tear and tape right over the top of that. Okay? Hopefully you guys got that. So that's your grass. And then what can happen is this path, um, I, I didn't tell you guys this, but your tree might need to get trimmed. You need to do some pruning. I did already have a little mine cut off, but your tree is maybe down to here. So you may have to cut your part of the bottom part of your tree off. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is the path needs to get glue right about to here. Okay, and that's gonna go on the front side. So there's no glue on the back. So we're just gonna put the front side kind of something like that. And I'm matching up my left edge with the left edge of the designer series paper. Um, so that's glued. Now I'm gonna flip this back and we're gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the path here. So that's glued to the back side. This part gets, some of that gets covered up anyways. So the one thing you can do to make your grass look cool is you could spread, <laughs> spread the, like the threads because they're kind of like rolled together. But if you take your pick tool, kind of like fraying the edges, if you kind of run them through, you can get it look to look like there's more. And if they're too long, you guys just give them a little haircut. All right, so you can see I've got the grass hanging out there. My path is glued down. And then what happens is, <laughs> this is the part that you have to do right. Otherwise you're gonna have glue everywhere. When I did my second sample card, I put the glue all right here and glued it down. It's like, that doesn't work. You have to glue this right here. I'm pretty sure. Let's see what I did on this one. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I had it folded right. Okay. There's, I guess there's two ways you can do it. So you can glue this top edge like this, or if you have it this way, you, you, you can't glue both halves, right? You can only glue one half and it looks like both ways work. So this one, I folded it. So this one's folded this way and it still will go flat. Or if you fold it back, then it goes like that. So either way will work. So you're either gluing the top half or the bottom half. Does, I hope that makes sense, you guys. So you just cannot put glue on the whole back. I had a couple people that did that where they put glue on the whole thing and it's like, uh, not gonna work and not so good. So either way is gonna work like that. So what we're gonna do, just to do this one, just to show that it both ways work, I'm crossing my fingers. So then this lines up on here. And that, oh, you don't wanna do it that way because that covers up. Ah, you don't wanna do it that way, okay. So they're really, it, it honestly would be better to glue that top half like this sample does here. If you do it the other way, then your path comes out the back end like that. So it's all good. It, it still has the same concept of how it sits on the front. So just to show you the difference on why you would want to fold this back that way and glue your top left corner and not your bottom right corner. It's all good. Still makes it, the card is gonna be perfectly fine. So then what you're gonna do is grab, see that was a good learning lesson for us. Now you learn how to see, do it two different ways and why you'd wanna do it one way. If you didn't have that path coming out the back end, it really wouldn't have mattered. So we learn together. All right, so you're gonna put some dimensionals on the hat and that's gonna be kind of like that. Can kind of hang off the path a little bit over here. Yeah, I just went through the thick part of the woods and came out on the other side. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Then you guys should have some stones. Let's see where I... Oh, there mine are. So these guys can go back in here. Slide them back in. All right. So I mentioned you either have two brown and a gray or two gray and a brown. Oh, I have grays here. So we're going to use up some of these grays. So... There's a gray that's gonna go in the middle. Nope, I'm gonna put the gray on the side over there. 
And we'll put a little brown one in the middle and then a smaller gray one. So the, the stones kind of are nestled right in front of the, the I keep calling it the dead grass because it's brown. So it's like dead grass to me. <laughs> so, and then the stones go right in the front. So I think that we just accomplished putting together the crazy hat card, right? So it's an easel card, I'm thinking, because it like pops up like an easel. You can see the difference, the path back there versus having the path being seen on the inside. So on this one, it actually looks cleaner on the inside when you open it up. So either way works. So Angela, I'm sure that however it ended up for you, as long as it, it sits right, I bet it's good. <laughs> All right. Ah, great masculine card. Absolutely, Melanie. <laughs> All right. So this one is my sample. So we're going to put that back in here. Um, let's look really quick what we had for cards for you guys. So we did three. So Tyler, Tyler, Tyler had hope last night that he was going to make three of these. But when you do a class with me, you get one of each of the cards. So he was surprised. He didn't know he was making these other two cards. So his last card that he made last night was I saved the hat card for him for last. So do you guys have a favorite card tonight? We've got our palm trees, our Asian ladybug beetle, and our hats off. Um, three different cards. So this is what I like to do with the monthly cards, you guys. It's my way to give you versatile cards. So like next week when we do the flowering fields next Thursday, you guys, they the, my sweet bundle class features all the product like the you know so like this one's very flowery and feminine, so. Um, they all are on the same theme, right? When I get to my monthly class, then I try to mix it up and give different varieties. So all occasion type cards for this. So, oh, palm trees. You guys are loving the palm trees. Cool. I like all three. Good deal. Got to hydrate here. Okay. Jody says the hat one. I'm all about the beach and the feel of the palm tree. They're all so different. I know. So I accomplished what I was after in making three very different cards for a class. So Linda likes Tyler's card. He is very proud of his card. So <laughs> he told me that when this card is off my display board, he's gonna put that up in the hive somewhere. <laughs> so, all right. Let's do a little bit of all of them. You guys are loving all of them, good. Well, all but the ladybug. <laughs> You're not a fan of the ladybug, Barbara. <laughs> So he's cute. I wonder if I can show you the Stella. Oh, ah. Uh, so I still it up his, his bottom there. Sometimes you can see it kind of glows a little bit. So, all right, let's do a little uh, announcing of some prizes. And we're going to do, da -da -da -da. I have the waves cards from the class last week, Friday, you guys. Uh, so if you missed this live, it is back in the archives of the videos from last week, Friday, which was the 8th. I did it at 5.30 p.m., so you can always catch the replay. Oh, they were fun making these cards. Um, the um, There are no kits left for this, you guys. They were gone. Sue Somerville got the very last kit before class was even done, basically. So we're gonna do drum roll. Da -da -da. This one goes to none other than Catherine Marie. Healy. So Catherine, you are the lucky duck winner of that card. I believe you were watching tonight. Da -da -da, this one goes to Deirdre Kroll. Um, Deirdre and Catherine, I have your addresses, so that's awesome. And the last one, da -da -da -da, with a little bit of a fun fold going on. Open it up. There we've got our pelican. And a Kathy Demon, D-E-M-N, D-E-M-M. -M O N Kathy, I don't have your address. So I'll need to know what that is if you want me to send you this beautiful card. So we have Kathy and Catherine and Deirdre for those lucky winners for the cards. And then we're gonna do a random number generator, you guys. So let's get into my internet. And we're gonna go to random number generator. It usually pops up. There it is. Okay. 
So for this class, I had, I marked it down, we had 16, holy Moses. So 16, so we're gonna put in 16 here. 16, and we're gonna click the word generate, number five. Five happens to be Debbie Schultz, buzzy, buzzing at work, buzzy, Debbie Schultz with a Z, okay? Debbie Schultz with a Z is buzzing. Your email's got the buzzing in it. That's how I know it's you. So Debbie, you are the lucky winner of a door prize. So um, packages just went out <laughs> with your, um, so Debbie, you'll have to wait to go to with your next package. So how I do my door prizes is um, it's a way of giving back and I don't pay, I don't send out prizes separately in like an envelope all by itself. When the person takes the next class with me, I will throw in a prize. And so Debbie, the next set of packages you have, because that other package is long gone. I can't go back and add it. So congratulations to Debbie. Congratulations to Catherine and Kathy and Deirdre. You girls are awesome. Thank you for everybody's support, you guys. Wow. <laughs> the classes just keep coming, you guys. So we have Easter weekend, you guys. Um, oh, scavenger hunt, Gina's asking. I haven't made it yet. So um, the scavenger hunt will be with the annual catalog. It will not be due until May 31st. Uh, I haven't made it yet. I'm lucky I made it for class tonight. <laughs> so the scavenger, and I won't be working on the scavenger hunt this weekend. I actually leave for Chicago for my with my friend Mandy. We're gonna ha have some girl time this weekend. I haven't had a vacation with her in probably three years and we used to do it yearly. You guys know what happens with the pandemic is you didn't do much. So this is the weekend. I didn't have any classes planned, of course, because it's Easter. Um, and I see my mom and dad all the time. And uh, so Tyler's still going to my parents to do Easter with the whole family, but I am spending some time with my girlfriend and I'm not going to be working on a lot of stuff this weekend. So if you guys email me or call me or text me and you don't get a response right away, give me at least until the late in the day on Monday because I I am going to try to stay off my phone as much as I can this weekend. So I will be making this. It's on my list to do next week, Jean. I'll be making the scavenger hunt, but you'll have plenty of time. You guys, it won't be due till May 31st. It's not even, it, it'll be, you'll have almost six weeks to work on it. So as soon as I have the scavenger hunt done, I will publish it on my newsletter section of my website. So you guys can download a copy and then also, um, I'll probably email about it. So, um, so you'll know when it's available. Uh, I think that's it for the scavenger hunt. Um, I wrapped up a little bit early tonight and I tried to do that because I have one more card that I'm going to make for my VIP group. Um, it is, where is it here? I'm going to show you real quick. I have one card left that looks, you guys are going to love it. This card right here was from my card buffet and I'm going to pop on really quick in the VIP group for about 10 minutes or so and make this card with you guys to show you how I did it. Um, that was a little extra thing I did. I don't know where I found some time to do that, but I did. Um, uh, <laughs> next week's going to be a little challenge too, because I'm going to do one every day next week is my plan. So um, if you missed the last couple days, I did one yesterday and I think I did one on Monday, uh, if that sounds right. So um, just know that when I end up today or wind up today, if you see me live again, that's why we're going to do that last little card. So I don't know. Did I miss anything? Um, so again, Kelly's working on the Technique Thursday, so just be patient on that. If um, if it's not today, it'll definitely be tomorrow. I know she's on it. And um, let me just see if I got any comments. So no, they turned out beautifully. Yay! Okay. Um, good stuff. Do you guys have a really good Easter weekend? eat lots of turkey and ham or whatever it is that you like to eat on Easter <laughs> or eggs. I should say hard boiled eggs. Eat lots of hard boiled eggs. Make the Easter bunny happy that you're eating eggs from a chicken instead of the Easter bunny. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> my mom <laughs> said that my brother and the kids are coming over and they're going to dye Easter eggs. And then the, so I grew up on a farm and one of the things that a tradition that my grandpa always did was he laid eggs out in the hay mow and he would actually take his hand and make it look like an Easter bunny laid eggs there. And then on Easter morning, we'd go out to the barn up in the hay mow and we would collect all the Easter eggs. And the funny story was, is that it would be June or July <laughs> And they would be working up there and they would find eggs that we missed finding. And they stood out because they're um, all colored, fun colors. And so they're going to do that with the grandkids, my nieces and nephews this weekend. So good stuff. Um, very good stuff. Lots of family time. I hope you guys have a good Easter weekend. 
Lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you. Make sure you do stuff for yourself. Yeah, great memories. I definitely agree, Judy. Uh, my grandpa made lots of fun things for us to do. So that's what grandparents are all about, right? Spoil the grandkids. Um, my mom has a thing on her wall at home that says, sugar them up, love them up, and then send them home <laughs> or something along those lines. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. All right, you guys. Oh, Penny says her chickens are laying so much. You have five, 18 counts of eggs. That's awesome. All right, you guys, will you enjoy your weekends? And I will be back um, live in like five minutes probably to do that last card and then on Monday to do that one of the MS cards. So thank you so much, Lynn. I will have a great time. We're just going to try to rekindle and bond and catch up on the last couple years of our life, I think. <laughs> so all right, you guys. And Deb, you have fun. I don't know when you leave for Canada. I think it's next week maybe or is it the following week? But I know you're getting ready to go to Canada. So hopefully you're starting to think about that and <laughs> pack some stuff stamping stuff, right? So, all right, you guys, we'll see you later. Love you. Bye.